Greg Landsman is a former public school teacher who is now the Democratic representative for Ohio's first congressional district and one of nearly 80 new House members of the 118th Congress. He talked to C-SPAN about why he attended Harvard's Divinity School, some of his faith-based tattoos, and how he first got into public school teaching before running for Congress. So my parents were uh, school teachers. I grew up, uh, you know, with uh, educators and, uh, you know, with the core belief that everyone has inherent value, right? And it's up to the adults uh, to bring that value out in children to like make sure they understand just how significant and powerful they are and I was really drawn to that idea in the profession uh, and I love teaching it's really hard <laughs> teaching is and so ultimately I would go on to do uh, education and child advocacy work including uh, helping to pass a, a, a ballot measure to provide two years of quality preschool for three and four year olds in Cincinnati. What grade did you teach? So I taught high school, uh, Spanish, and remedial math. And was there a, f a phrase or an adage that you said to you, the kids? Well, you know, the, the one thing I repeated, I, I tried to repeat over and over with, with my students was this idea of their own power. Uh, that, you know, as young people, they don't realize just how powerful they are. Even as adults, we forget just how much we can influence somebody else with kindness and compassion. Uh, and conversely, if we're not very nice, you know, that has real implications too in terms of how they're gonna behave with other people. And so as a student, if you're really kind to somebody uh, and you lift them up, they're gonna turn around and do that to other people and that can really change a school, right? Like that changes everyone, uh, everyone's day in a good way. And, and you know, the opposite is true. If you're, you know, mean to somebody, that has a ripple effect. And so there's just real power and, and, and appreciating that was something I, I kept, uh, you know, reminding my students. You also have a master's in theology from Harvard Divinity School. Yeah. Explain. So uh, my faith has always been a huge part of who I am. Uh, ever since I can remember, it, it was there. Uh, and... I wanted to go to graduate school. I really wanted to be at Harvard. It was something that I had put on my list of things to, to do. Uh, but to study something that would allow me to be a better public servant, right? To immerse myself in something I cared deeply about, which was my faith, and to study it as broadly and comprehensively as I could. Uh, but to do so in the context of a vocational interest uh, politics and public service. So I got a better sense as to the role religion plays both internationally um, and here domestically uh, in, in, in the good ways that religion can bring us together, help us solve problems, the role that faith-based organizations play uh, in delivering services and lifting people up. Uh, so it was, uh, I think, a really valuable degree uh, especially for somebody who's going to do public service uh, and, and, you know, particularly in Congress. <laughs> you wear your faith under your sleeve? Yeah. So, yeah, I have uh, multiple tattoos um, and each one of them is, is uh, really grounded in my faith. So uh, I have a tattoo here which says believe and it's the idea that it's a reminder that in order to achieve big things, uh, you really do have to believe in what you're doing in your core. And so it's just, it's, it, it helps me uh, pick and choose where I'm gonna spend my time and energy, uh, legislatively and otherwise, uh, so that it's, it's those things that I really believe in. And so I'll, I'll keep at it until I get it done, which is, I think, really important. You have kids as well. Tell us about your family. Uh, so uh, my wife, Sarah, and I have two children. Um, our daughter, Maddie, is almost 13. Uh, her bat mitzvah is in like four or five weeks. So that's something, you know, uh, that we're preparing for. It's a big deal. Uh, and then our son, Elijah, is 11. And so, you know, they got to speak to the president last night. We were invited over to the White House. The, the, the new members were with their spouses. and. 
I, you know, asked the president if he would say, a, you know, just videotape like a, um, a greeting uh, to my son who, who has a big basketball game on Friday. And he said, well, let's just call him. And so uh, he just FaceTimed the two kids, which was, you know, pretty special. What did he say to them? He just was asking about him. I mean, you know, he's, he, he's a genuinely nice human being, and I think he's interested in other people. And, uh, you know, so he was excited to talk to both of them. I mean, and it's, it, it was, it's a really neat thing to share with your family, this experience. I mean, there's uh, just such enormous responsibility with this job, uh, particularly now with all of these major uh, things that we're having to tackle. Uh, and to have moments like that where uh, you just get to enjoy this experience with your children and your wife uh, is pretty remarkable. Teenagers typically don't think their parents are cool. Do they think you're cool? I don't know <laughs> if they think I'm cool. I don't think so. I think they appreciate the, the job and the significance of it. Um, particularly when the President of the United States FaceTimes them. I don't think either one of them would say I was cool. <laughs> Have you met some good friends here in Washington, made good friends? Yeah, one of the things the President spoke about last night was when he first came to Congress and it was following this awful tragedy um, uh, and losing his wife and his daughter and he didn't, he didn't expect to stay. He didn't think he was going to stay, but it was the friends he made uh, in those early months uh, that uh, you know, uh, inspired him to keep doing the job. And I, I you know, have met some really remarkable people, uh, particularly in this fr freshman class, that I suspect will be lifelong friends. You're also a boxer. Tell yeah. us about the hobby and, and how has it impacted you? What does it, tell, what does it say about who you are? So counterintuitively, boxing calms most of us down. If you, if you spend time in the gym, uh, which I try to do three or four days a week, doing bag work and, and sometimes sparring, you actually you know, spend the rest of the day or week relatively calm. Uh, and so that's what it has done for me more than anything else. I, I you know, keeps me in shape. Uh, it allows me to think it's the one thing in the gym you can't do and be on your phone. So you have to really uh, think um, and get off your phone, which is great. Uh, but it also just uh, has made me a calmer person. And I think calmer folks, at least this has been my experience, uh, are much more compelling and, and, and can communicate more clearly.